Today, listen, listen. Today we're doing the endocrine system. This is a system of your body that produces, uh, it's all your glands and hormones. I love hormones. Page. It's section 35.3. Page 1031. Page 1031. What's the essay in this chapter? Is it a good What page is it? 10, 1031. Section 35.3, the endocrine system. Okay, an endocrine gland. All right, my turn. An endocrine gland is a gland that produces a hormone, and a hormone is a chemical way of communication. Last chapter we talked about nerves that communicate through electrical signals. Hormones are ways of communicating through chemicals. And there's two types of hormones. There's steroid hormones and non-steroid hormones, and I'll show you both of them here. Here's how a steroid hormone works. The steroid hormone is some molecule that travels through the body. It's released by a gland. And will travel through the body and will go right through a cell's membrane. You see there's a membrane of a cell there? It'll go right through a cell's membrane and into the nucleus of a cell where it latches on to some protein. And that causes it to interact with the DNA of the cell and then some change will occur. And so, uh, it's a way for a, one, a gland, like for instance your pituitary gland, uh, can send out a signal, actually the pituitary gland doesn't send out any steroid hormones. Um, your testes or ovaries will send out steroid hormones that will cause the cells of your body to react in such a way. For instance, testosterone, in males causes men's muscles to grow bigger. That's why guys have bigger muscles than girls. And what happens is the steroid hormone is released by the testes, and we'll talk about the sex organs next chapter. But listen, the steroid hormones travel around the body through the blood, go into the muscle cells, and react in the nucleus of the muscle cells, and that ends up causing the muscle cells to make more proteins and when the proteins are added to the muscle cells, the muscle cells get bigger. So here's some video footage. Hey, uh -huh. This is a pretty lame video, I'm just going to show you. Here comes the, here comes the steroid hormone and it goes right into the cell and inside the cell it binds there with that protein and that causes some change in the DNA and that causes the DNA of course can cause proteins to be made so that was a bad video, sorry maybe this one's better I haven't seen this one Hormones that are made from lipids are called steroid hormones. Steroid hormones are lipid soluble and therefore diffuse freely into cells through their plasma membranes. There they bind to a hormone receptor inside the cell. The hormone receptor complex then travels to the nucleus where it activates the synthesis of specific messenger RNA molecules. The mRNA molecules move out to the cytoplasm, where they guide the synthesis of the required proteins. So it's a way for organs to communicate. Now not all hormones can go right through the membrane like steroids can. Many hormones are called amino acid hormones, and they actually attach to receptors on the surface of the cell. There's a protein receptor in the membrane, and here's an amino acid hormone, like for instance growth hormone. Your pituitary gland in your brain releases growth hormone. And that hormone attaches to a receptor on the cell. And when that hormone attaches to the receptor, there's some change happens inside the cell. 
that causes the cell to respond. If it's growth hormone, the cell will multiply. Here's a little bit better video that shows you how these hormones work. When a signal molecule, such as epinephrine, binds to a cell surface receptor protein, it activates a G protein on the inside of the cell. The G protein then stimulates a dendrocyte. cycle. And here it just shows all this stuff. This is an AP bio video. There's a lot of stuff that happens on the inside. But basically what, what happens is, the hormone is the red ball there, and it attaches to a protein that's on the membrane of the cell, and then stuff happens inside the cell that you don't need to know exactly what it is. But, for instance, it could cause the cell to grow, to multiply. And that's what growth hormone does. You have a hormone that's emitted by your pituitary gland, and it causes all your cells to multiply, and so you get bigger. People who don't emit enough hormone, growth hormone, Midgets. end up small. Midgets. People who emit too much growth hormone end yeah. up huge, giants. Like that guy I'll show you a video at the end of class today that has the biggest guy in the world. He's Asian, right? He's dead now. Why is he Asian? Yeah. He's not. He's American. Was he in movies? He's American. All right, listen. So the way hormones work, hormones levels have to be kept. You can't have too much hormone and you don't want to have not enough. So hormone levels are kept even by a process called negative feedback. It's the same process that controls the temperature in this room. This is, the thermostat runs the air conditioner. If it gets too hot in the room, the thermostat sends a signal to turn the air conditioner on. When it gets too cold in the room, the thermostat senses that and sends a signal to turn the air conditioner off. And then the temperature will go back up. And then when it gets too hot, back on with the air conditioner. When it gets too cold, back off with the air conditioner. It keeps the levels steady. And we call that negative feedback. Negative feedback keeps the temperature, using the thermostat, kind of in the middle range. You have negative feedback mechanisms. They keep all of your hormone levels pretty constant. So you don't have too much or too little. You don't want too much growth. You don't want too little growth. You need those hormones kept constant. Now, here's a naked man with all the organs that emit hormones. You may not have heard of all these organs. The, uh, there's one in the brain right here called the pituitary gland. That's the master gland. We'll learn about that. There's a little one in the back here called the pineal gland. That's in the back of the brain there. We won't learn about that. That secretes a hormone called melatonin that makes you sleepy every night. You get sleepy every night because of a hormone. I don't know if you do there's that. A, there's a gland around your throat in your throat region right here called the thyroid gland. That releases hormones that control metabolism. You ever heard so-and-so has a high metabolism so she can eat as much as she wants? That's controlled by your thyroid gland. Your little parathyroid glands on the back help control calcium levels. They're on the back of the thyroid gland. If you were to turn that thyroid gland around, it would look like this. And those little dots are called the parathyroid gland. There's a gland right here called your thymus gland that helps your white blood cells. We're not going to learn about that. There's two glands right here called the adrenal glands. They sit on top of your kidneys, and they release a, a hormone called adrenaline. You ever heard of that? No. Yeah. It makes you, makes you, uh, helps, uh, your muscles work stronger. It helps you uh, react to danger. Adrenaline. But what if, is it possible someone have too much adrenaline? Like too many adrenal glands? Have you seen crank? Yeah. It could be. Yeah. Pancreas. <laughs> this organ, it helps with digestion. We learned last section. It releases digestive juices, but it also releases two hormones. You, one hormone you probably heard of, insulin. And another one called glucagon that control your sugar levels in your blood. You don't want too much sugar in your blood, you don't want not enough sugar in your blood. So that's controlled by the pancreas. Some people don't make insulin at all and they have what's called diabetes. Was that what you were going to ask? I was going to ask why they don't make insulin. 
Um, what, they, what happened was for some weird reason, their white blood cells attacked their pancreas and destroyed all the cells that make insulin. Ouch. Nobody knows why. It's called an autoimmune disease. Yeah. And in some people it happens, and in most people it doesn't. But can you like also develop uh, testes and ovaries? We'll learn about next chapter. But can you also like develop diabetes? You can. That's called type two diabetes, and that's usually in overweight people. What, what, what does that mean? Like that's when your your cells react uh, stop reacting to insulin. They've had insulin washing over them so much because you you eat a lot of sugar usually is why. And they say, well, we're not going to, we're going to ignore the insulin for now. So you are producing insulin, but your cells are ignoring it. It's called type 2 diabetes. Now, once again, here's the little pituitary gland. The pituitary gland hangs down below the brain. And the pituitary gland is called the master gland because it releases about seven or eight different hormones. I show them to you in this next slide. This is from the AP Biology book. Your book really doesn't cover everything that the pituitary gland releases. And I'll just go over them real quickly with you. Your book only covers some of this. One of the things the pituitary gland does, this is the pituitary gland that hangs down from the brain. And uh, it's actually divided into two lobes. The anterior pituitary, that's toward the front, and the posterior pituitary, that's toward the back. The anterior pituitary helps control your thyroid gland and your adrenal gland. It tells those glands when to emit their hormones. Also the ovaries and testes, it tells your sex organs when to emit their hormones. And it releases growth hormone that tells your body to grow. It releases prolactin that tells women's breasts to make milk when they have their babies. It releases oxytocin that tells women's breasts to make milk when they have their babies. And oxytocin also tells women's uterus to contract, to push the baby out when a woman's pregnant and about to have a baby. Oxytocin is that hormone that does it. It also releases antidiuretic hormone, ADH, that causes um, your kidneys to conserve water. You don't want to pee out all your water. If it weren't for antidiuretic hormone, you'd pee out all your water. Antidiuretic hormone is, tells the kidneys, don't pee out the water, conserve the water. Well, did you die if you pee out all your water? You get, that's what a hangover is. The reason why people have hangovers when they drink too much alcohol is because alcohol blocks antidiuretic hormone. And when you're drinking alcohol, you start peeing all your water out, you wake up the next morning and you're dried up and yeah, it gives you a headache. Yes. Is it possible to take your sweat glands out? Uh, I don't know about that. Whoa. Would that be really bad for you? Probably, yeah. You never eat. Get out of here. There's a, a giant. A lot of growth hormone. Michael Jordan. A lot of growth hormone. And the other dude in uh, Boy Face Jam? Uh, yeah, I think well, they've got his name. That's not, yeah. No, it's not. Muggsy Bugs? No. Or Black and Black and Night. No, it's Muggsy Bugs. How tall is the other guy? Yeah. That guy's about no, no. my height, and that, my, that's Michael Jordan. He's that's, like 6'7". That's seven. about my height. The height. other picture. The white guy. That guy? Oh, he's like 7 feet. Why is he the white guy? Sounds like me. Here's what happens to a person when they have too much growth hormone at an old so, age. Normal looking, normal looking, you see problems. She's a uh, growth hormone. If your pituitary gland releases too much growth hormone at an old age, you kind of your you, your cartilage will grow too much, and so they have big nose and big ears and pro joint problems. In the third picture, she looks like Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's good thing. Awful. Now the thyroid gland your book talks about. The thyroid gland is this gland around your throat, and it, like I said, it releases hormones that control your metabolism. It also releases hormones that control your calcium level. The parathyroid gland releases a hormone that increases the calcium in your blood. The thyroid gland re releases a hormone called calcitonin that decreases your calcium in your blood. So these two hormones keep your calcium level steady. It's another type of negative feedback. What would happen if you had too much calcium? Um, that caused muscle problems. 
Remember, calcium is used in muscles to contract. I thought you had just had like really, really strong back. And nerve problems, because cal calcium is needed in nerves. Your nerves will be over after you. Yeah. Look at that. That's an enlarged thyroid gland. It's called a goiter. You ever heard of a goiter before? The thyroid gland can sometimes grow real large. What are the chances of that happening? Most people, it doesn't happen. If you get enough iodine in your food, it doesn't happen. And that's why we put iodine in our salt in America. So people won't get goiters. Have you ever seen salt says iodized salt? We put iodine in our salt and it keeps us from getting goiters. No, no, no. The iodine keeps you from getting. I know. But if I'm going to get a lot of salt. Oh. And people in America usually eat plenty of salt. So we don't see many goiters. That kid has cretinism. He had a problem with his thyroid gland and didn't release enough hormones. So How old is he? Legs. 17? So the legs grow real legs. short and he's got all other types of problems. How old is he though? Oh, I don't know. He's a kid. He's like a little kid. He's like 42. <laughs> he's like 4. Like I said before, the pancreas releases the hormones insulin and glucagon. Insulin, when the pancreas releases insulin, blood sugar goes down. When the pancreas releases glucagon, blood sugar goes up. And sugar is stored in your liver. So if you haven't, if you've just eaten a lot of sugar, you'll have high blood sugar and your pancreas will squirt out some insulin and all that sugar will be stored in your liver. If you haven't eaten in a long time and you're low in blood sugar, the pancreas squirts out glucagon and it causes your liver to release the sugar. And so the blood sugar levels are kept relatively constant. Yeah. So for people when, with diabetes, when their like blood sugar is low, they get a lot of sugary food. Food. So like, well, when their blood sugar is low, they they yeah they'd have to eat sugar, and when their blood sugar is too high, they got to shoot themselves up with insulin. And so they're constantly having to do that. You probably know people who have that. Yeah. Sometimes my, my grandma gets like a really low blood sugar, and she can't eat like straight sugar. She has to drink like orange juice and stuff. Cause, like, yeah. If you eat straight sugar, it doesn't work. Right. I don't know why that is. And like I said, just above the kidneys are the adrenal glands. They release um, adrenaline, which if, if, you're, if you're scared or afraid or something, adrenaline will be released, and that will cause your muscles to work better and your heart to speed up and so what forth. Is it when it's kind of like the fight or flight nervous system. What's yes. it when you like get the shakes or whatever? What's that about? Because like my mom gets the shakes and just like drink orange juice or eat a banana. Could be, I don't know, could be a, a, not enough blood sugar for some reason. Or something, or something. I don't know. Let's see what this is. The hypothalamus is the portion of the brain that connects the endocrine and nervous systems. The hypothalamus produces two hormones. This is not good. There's a kid with too much adrenal hormones. It causes one thing adrenal hormones do, it causes your body to conserve your body to conserve water. And so he's not fat, his his cells are all swollen up with water. Once he was treated with drugs to control his adrenal hormones, he looked normal. Same kid. I like when you have the cute kid. I like the happy one. Not like, yeah, it's like this. Happy this. Happy like, I already yeah. talked about ADA. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see video footage. Now, this is a video about the tallest guy to ever live. Um, his name was Robert Wadlow. Couple things about this video. The volume, listen, the volume on the video is too low. And even when I turn it up as high as possible, you uh, it's hard to hear. So everybody needs to be quiet to listen. And second, after a while, the audio gets off from the video. I hate that. So they're saying something and you don't hear it for a second later. But it is a great video and, and you want to see what happens when the pituitary gland gets a tumor, a growth in it, that causes it to release too much growth hormone. Very interesting stuff. Quiet, please. you got to be quiet. From a small town on the banks of the Mississippi, who first inspired doctors to investigate the causes of the condition which creates giants. In 1918, a child who would become famous throughout the world was born here in Alton, Illinois. Robert Wadlow was only six months old when this photograph was taken. 
By the age of five, Robert stood five feet four inches, already taller than his grandmother. At age ten, his growth showed no sign of letting up. Robert enjoyed a happy family life in Alton, going to high school and college like other young people of his age. But when the media discovered the Alton giant, he became a national celebrity. Introducing the famous Wadlow fan. Yes, they own the only skyscraper in town. Now Mr. Wadlow will describe his property to you. And this is Robert. Robert is uh, seven feet ten inches tall. Only oh, 360 pounds. He's 15 years old. Everything had to be specially made for Robert. His shoes, his clothes, and especially his huge furniture. This is like deja vu all over again. I'm sitting in Robert's chair again after all these years, but this is it's absolutely amazing. You know, there were about five chairs, and no one could find any of them except this one here. Gene Crivello was a childhood friend of Robert's and recalls how popular he was. He was the kindest, generous person I ever knew. Robert had more friends than, than you can imagine. His neighbors and his YMCA buddies. He was the tallest Boy Scout in the world. And he was the... Everybody who met Robert remembers their first encounter. I knew him as a small child. I was the small child. He was the large person. <clears throat> I was in the sixth grade in Brighton, Illinois, a little village north of Alton. I, I was astonished at him, and I marveled at him, and, and I got to shake his hand. He went up and up and up. I felt very tiny, and my hand just disappeared in his. Robert hoped to work in an office. He wanted to train as a lawyer, but the sheer size of his hands made this impossible. Now standing 8 feet 11 inches, he went on the road as a shoe salesman. His feet were larger than this shoe. This is a 37 and a half size shoe. And it's one like he would travel throughout the United States with his father and a member of the Brown Shoe Company to demonstrate himself and the shoes. And people would come into the shoe stores to see Robert and to buy shoes. He was a good representative, a good salesman. Robert is also becoming an object of fascination for doctors. As a young physician with an interest in human growth, William Dowaday wanted to know why Robert Wadlow was growing so huge. Essentially, all his excess growth was achieved before the age of four to five. After that, his growth velocity, that is, how much he grows per year, was not particularly remarkable. But though the speed of his growth had declined, he still continued to get larger. Dr. Dawaday saw all of Robert's medical records and has no doubt that his enormous stature was caused by a medical condition. Well, I think he had a, a growth hormone secreting tumor in the pituitary, one of the more common types of pituitary tumors. The pituitary is one of the master glands of the brain, located just below the optic nerve. It's normally the size of a pea, but if things go wrong, a tumor can occur. This tumor can go to the size of a tennis ball and cause huge amounts of growth hormone to flood through the body. The condition is called acromegaly, and there was no effective treatment in Robert's time. The effects on his health were catastrophic. It's very really clear that he was having great difficulty in walking. He had a foot brace on, and uh, he was Incapacitated. He was also losing sensation in his legs. The neuropathy is disease of the nerves that carry the message of sensation up to the spine, up to the brain. If you lose those nerves, you don't feel pain. Robert had also developed a condition called foot drop and had to wear a metal brace. And it was this that led directly to his early death. This foot brace that he had for a foot drop wore against his ankle and produced a motor which he was unaware of. He died in 1970. 
died of a foot infection from the foot race he wore at age 22. He was 8 feet 11 and a half inches. Well, he tall. kept going to live on it. Probably. Uh, you got to sign so, out. Fill us out. But what happens?